this leak from Gangu Teli was enough to drown Yasser Qadi. <laughs> I'm with him, with Yasser Qadi trying to somehow paddle through the situation. Uh, he managed to drown <laughs> a bunch of other uh, people with him as well because of his magnificent explanation, which was uh, so terrific. <laughs> so this is like, wow. Oh, man, this is just, I honestly, I just, I did not see this coming. So I had to share that with you guys. This person by the name of Farid Response Farid Leaks, he is really trying to refute our dear brother, the living legend himself, Christian Prince. And he made a response video about what Christian Prince said on his live show. But wait, there are some hilarious claims from Farid and I wanted to address them. Now, Christian Prince doesn't need my help, but... I did some research about this fake wannabe translation of the New Testament, supposedly made or published in the year 1816. Let us see what Farid has to say about it. I would like you folks to become aware of a little something that I'm not sure you've noticed. I'm not saying that. It's you who's saying that. There's no, there's no marriage in Islam. You don't use the word marriage. You say the F word. We, as an Arab Christian, we use the word zawaj. You, as a Muslim, you use nikah, the F word. Now, the reason why this is such an interesting clip is because this ignoramus doesn't know that the term nikah is used by all Arabs, Christians, and Muslims. Here is an image from an Arabic translation of the Bible, Matthew 5. Let's check it out in the English. Jesus is saying anyone who married Yenka, a divorced woman commits adultery. Okay, first point I'd like to make is that this is not some random image off the internet. I've added a link to the book in the description. You can check it out yourself if you like. As you can see, I'm scrolling through the book right now, going to Matthew chapter 5. And you can yourself see that this image isn't shocked. Salibi made the claim that this is the Van Dyke translation. Now, this is another lie by him. Look at this note on the Facebook page that he's quoting. This is a translation. The author of the Facebook post is showing you two Arabic translations to show you that the meaning is the same. Salibi instead is claiming that this text is from the Van Dyke translation. That was a claim that was not made by the Facebook user. Okay? Look, 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 look. It says this translation. Okay? So what is this translation? It is the Al-Ahd al-Jadid translation that was printed in the year 1860. No, ya jahl, ya miskeen. There is nothing called Al Ahd al Jadid translation. It should have gotten a name like Van Dyke or the King James translation. What is the name of this translation? You don't know, right? Look at all these books in the background. They are not really helping you, Farid. Please get more books. Try to show off more that you are so smart. And you want to teach us about uh, our. Holy Bible? Get some hikmah, man. Get some wisdom. Look, 1816, before the translation of the Van Dyke um, translation by decades. Just a second, Farid. Where do you want to go? We are here to catch you. The front cover on this unknown translation, the front cover is empty. Any translation, any book should have a name. Who is it written by? What is the name of this translation? It's empty. It's blank, basically. So it, there's something fishy going on here. Where's the name? Who wrote this? It is only saying that this New Testament is attributed to our Lord and Savior, Isa al-Masih. Wait, wait, wait. Arabic-speaking Christians don't call Jesus Isa. We are calling him Yesu al-Masih. 
And what is the name of this translation? We, again, don't know. It's only called the New Testament. Any Arabic translation for the New Testament has a name. For example, Van Dyck, or in the English, for example, the King James, or the New King James. So, do you see the problem? It has no name. It's unnamed. Who wrote it? We don't know. If we continue reading, it says that it's published in the year 1816, 1816, 1816, uh, published in India, Calcutta. And that's it. No name. Well, if we scroll down through this fake translation, which has no name, if we scroll down all the way down, we find a shocking thing. Again, even the back cover has nothing to say. So it's completely blank. But here is a disaster that I discovered. Look, it's saying Sir M. Monier Williams. Who is this person? I did some digging. And lo and behold, let me show you the deception which is used in this wannabe fake translation of the New Testament. Watch. Who wrote this so-called translation? That's what I want to know. And when I scrolled down, I went all the way down. I found that this translation is using a stamp, basically. In the old days, they used to basically use a stamp of someone who uh, wrote this or is basically associated with this publishing of this so-called translation. But lo and behold, here comes the problem. It says, Sir Monier Monier Williams. Sir Monier Monier Williams. But wait, who is this Sir Monier Monier Williams? I did some research and I found that Sir Monier Monier Williams was born in the year 1819 in Mumbai, India. He is a professor who is associated with the Oxford University in England. But wait, he is born in the year 1819. So what is his stamp doing in this so-called 1816 translation of the New Testament? Do you see the disaster here? So the one who wrote this or published this so-called New Testament translation in the Arabic, he is using Sir Monier Monier Williams, his branding, his stamp, while Sir Monier was not even born yet. He is born in 1819, but this document is claiming, this translation is claiming that it's, published in the year 1816 wow sir monier monier williams was not it was not even born yet he wasn't he was not even uh, a professor yet you see the disaster so what can we conclude about this fake unknown translation there are some major issues with this so-called new testament arabic translation and here is why this unknown translation has no name. The cover is blank. What is the name of this translation? We don't know. Point number two. Isa al-Masih is used instead of Yesu al-Masih, which is the real Arabic name of Jesus that real Arabic-speaking Christians use. There is nothing called Isa. Isa, on the other hand, is the satanic Islamic counterpart the fake name of jesus in the quran for example that muhammad used point number three sir monier monier williams as we showed you was born in the year 1819 while his stamp was used in this fake 1816 translation how is this possible mr farid and point number four a real Arabic-speaking Christian would not dare to force a word like nikah, which means effing, 
in the mouth of Jesus. Jesus did not use the word F, God forbid. So Jesus did not say F, Jesus said the one who marries. Right? So if we go to any existing Arabic translation of the New Testament, let's say, we find in Matthew 5, in Matthew 5, verse 32, Jesus is talking about marriage. He's not talking about effing. So here, we can conclude that this is nothing but a fake, anonymous, unknown, false translation of the New Testament. Lord knows. The Lord knows who wrote this translation. We don't know. It's not mentioned. The cover is empty. It has no name. And the fake name of Jesus is used. Now imagine if anyone, any Christian would have done that to the Quran. Using a false translation for the Quran. All the Muslim apologists would have started to cry by now. No, you have to go to the real translation. You have to go to the real Arabic of the Quran. Would you take any translation for granted? Especially an unknown, unnamed translation? Hmm. You see these desperate tactics of people like Farid Leaks? Well, yeah, it is what it is, right, Farid? Yeah, miskin, yeah, jail. And I will provide the link to this fake translation in the description box. So you can do some research yourself about it and see the disasters that we mentioned.